Okay, you lovely lot, we are at the beautiful Cudmore Fisheries on the Arena Lake where we are going to be doing maggot fishing with a bit of a difference. Obviously, we've done lots and lots um, of videos on how to fish maggots, how to get the best out of your swims and everything. This one is a bit different because we're just going to be targeting great big wobbly carps. It can be an absolutely phenomenal tactic for this time of year. You know, the, the fish are thinking about having a massive feed up for winter now. We are. October's like this weekend, so that's where we are. Right right at the back end of September, the nights are starting to go a little bit colder. You know, that wind's starting to feel a little bit cold as well because I've picked the blooming coldest peg in the old wide world on this lake. And it's just where you can get away with feeding lots and lots of bait, not on about, you know, putting bait in, loose feeding baits, but it's the distance out that we're going, folks. And that's how you can do a, a silly weight. You know, 100 pounds in an hour is not uncommon when you see the size of these fish. Now, Bearing in mind, I'm going to be fast forwarding everything, so yes, we might get the odd little baby perch, perch on the cave, might get the odd little baby gudgeon and things like that, but you get to know when the carp are coming in because you're getting all these little baby uh, bites first off the smaller fish. When there's some big day, your float just stays there and you're like, oh, it's get ready time, but it's a phenomenal way of fishing. You do need a lot of bait. Um, and the rigs themselves are so simple. Yep, that's why I'm covering it. So without further ado, let's go on to the rigs then. First things first, top kit. You need to consider your top kits that you're using. Now, I'm basically, I'm just fishing a top kit straight in front of me. I'm not putting sections on or anything like that. Might do if I get a great big wobbly one, but to start with, I'm fishing a top kit straight in front of me. You don't want to be using your F1 kits for this uh, style of fishing, folks, because these carp will just take the absolute Michael out of them, you know, because obviously you've not got enough elastic in the top kit for a, for a start and it's just going to bottom them out far too quick. Snappage will occur. So you need a, a, yeah, your traditional top two kit. Elastic wise next. Now, again, we're fishing heavy. So this is a 17s Jura hybrid. I'd either fish a 17s or a 19s even. Um, not interested in fishing for like little baby fish. If I catch them, I catch them, but you know, at this distance here, once you get them bite, you clunk into these big carp, you just want them to sort of like swim out of your peg, keep that top kit under the water, ideally not putting any sections on. You know, it's all about uh, efficiency and being nice and quick. So wallop into the carp, pull it under the water, strip, strip, and then usually these fish are ready to be netted. So 17's Jura. Next is line. We've got 0.22 main line on. Uh, 0.22 Acupower, very, very strong, very robust. Again, no room for finesse or anything like that, folks. Got a fish nice and positive. Got a bit of weed on that float. Float wise, next. And now, even though we're only at what, it's sort of like three, three and a half foot, I'll go through plumbing up in a sec, folks. Just want to get this that bit of weed off that float. I'll go through plumbing up in a sec. So we're only fishing in sort of three, three and a half foot of water. Now, normally, you'd be thinking of fishing floats like certainly 412s, possibly a 410. But in this instance, with the size of the fish that are coming into that water uh, and the, the big baits that I'm going to put in on the hooks, I'm going to put in on sort of like four, five, six maggots on, on a hook, you've got to use quite a robust float. So a 414's carp uh, or a 416's carp, even in that depth of water, carp pellet with a nice thick bristle is perfect for the job. Just got a little baby trimming stock under that float, which is a number 11. And then coming down the float, Talk you through plumbing up in a sec, folks, as I say. Don't get any simpler, does it? We've literally got a bulk of number eights. We've got six number eights on there, and we've got a six inch up length straight out of the packet. I'm using today, we're using um, XSH in the size 14 uh, to 0.17. So just nice and strong. Now, the reason I like to use a, uh, I mean, we always say like use, you know, short hook lengths and all that in the shallow water. Well, the difference with this is the difference in the bait is using a longer hook length but with that bulk shot there it's acting so natural yeah so when these big fish come into that uh, into that area where where you're putting all the bait in your bait is acting lovely and natural as the fish start wafting the fins your bait's getting kicked up off the bottom and then they see this big bunch of maggots they nail it it's such an effective way of fishing i can't stress enough uh, so no room for droppers or anything like that you just want to get straight down get job done now the main thing with this i'll just put that top kit away for a sec the main thing is with this is the amount of bait that you'll need. Obviously, this is no good on venues where I want to say they restrict you to sort of like four pints of natural baits. You do need a lot of baits, sometimes more than a pint an hour. It's not the fact that you're going to be feeding it all session. It's 
sort of like when you fish the margins, you know, coming into sort of like that time of day, uh, half one, two o'clock onwards, your last sort of like couple hours of your session, that's when this swim really sort of like kicks in. So if I don't catch on it early, it's because I've gone on it too early, but I'm sure I will do, folks. Uh, so you're going to need a lot of bait. Now, normally I'll take with me six pints of maggots. Uh, again, I'm still on my white more than my reds. I've got a few reds mixed in today, folks. I've gone five pints of whites and a pint of reds. But, you know, won't think anything of feeding sort of that amount. Uh, you know, sort of 60, 70, 80 maggots and two lots of that feed. Yeah, when these fish come in and start munching on the maggots, there's basically no food there for them. It's just liquid at the end of the day. So you can get away with feeding a hell of a lot. And you need to on some venues that we go to, folks, simply because of the amount of small fish there as well. Yeah, so you need to feed them off. So two lots of feed right over your float and then we're just waiting for the bite. No lifting and dropping whatsoever. It is just utter carnage when these fish have it. It's... I'm going to say it's one of my favourite styles of fishing, but every style of fishing I do is my favourite style of fishing. But this in particular, I mean, it can be like in your match. You might have gone three hours of your match and not really caught anything. But when you get used to this and this style of fishing, folks, and, you know, even from a pleasure perspective as well, if you're just going for, you know, a couple of hours or something after work, this style of fishing, feeding this amount of bait, it is just absolutely amazing. So I think without further ado, I'm going to swivel round. I'm going to get plummet on and show you where I'm plumbing up to and obviously uh, picking out the markers as well. So let's go and get some plumbing done. Right, so plumbing up then, folks. Nice heavy plummet because that wind has decided to get up. Now, markers wise, I'm still going to pick a marker even though when I feed, it's going to be going over sort of like size of a size of a tea no size of a dinner plate if you like you know what i mean because obviously i want a nice spread on that bait when these big fish start coming in but as i said i'm still picking my marker so my first marker is my puller kit on my front leg and then my next marker i've got a nice little gap in the reeds opposite i want to be plumbing up to sort of the bottom of the body of the float yeah i don't want to be sort of like halfway down the float i want to be bottom of the body of the float like that just to give you an idea of what these lakes are like as well folks most lakes will be similar you're just going out a little bit and it's just going to ever so slightly just nip off. So we're on that nice hard ground, which is perfect for this. But this tactic, folks, certainly that longer hook length on would still work on, you know, real silty venues as well. So just double check that again. I'm on my marker, bottom of the float. Yep, that's perfect. And we're going to go for it in one, folks. So now I've just got live maggots with me today, folks. But for speed, I definitely recommend you have some... That's burst that, we don't want that one. I definitely recommend you add some um, dead maggots, just for speed, so you can get a few out and just put, you know, five or six on dead quick, rather than picking these live maggots out. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go six maggots on. Not really bothered what color, more white than red, I suppose. I've got one little babby red one on there, but that's what we're looking for, yeah? Six maggots on, quite a big hook. It's just that initial sort of like sight that the fish see, like, they nail it, it's brilliant. Now I'm fully expecting to get the odd little babby perch or goose one, spat everywhere then folks, I do apologise, to start with, but the more I feed, these big carp will come into it. So first things first, flip that rig out, get over my marker, which is there, gonna drop that and straight away, I'm gonna go in with two lots, two lots of feed on my marker there. Now it's important that we're striking at the right bite as well, folks, we don't wanna be striking it little baby dinks or anything like that. I'm waiting for that bite when I'm carp come in to go nice and quick, yeah? Certainly with that big standout bait on like a, a bunch of maggots. See, that was a little baby fish, that. Don't want to be striking at that. So just lift that out of the way. As I said, the carp bites are completely different. Fully expecting to get a few, you know, goujons and little perch first. Yeah, another little goujon, see what I mean? Yeah, it is a goujon and all. But nice and quick, I don't need to change that bait. You know what I'm like about changing bait, folks. Don't need to change it. Now, I would say to start with, when you're building the swim, you don't really want to let three minutes go by without putting some bait in. You've got to, got to be aggressive with it. Because what you're doing is obviously you're attracting them big carp in, but you're feeding them little fish off, which is what you want as well. I think you need the little babby fish there to, uh, to attract the carp. Well, that could have been a that could have been a carpy bite then. I'm gonna say what usually what happens is it just sort of like everything goes like nice and quiet when there's these big carp coming into your peg, and then all of a sudden you just get that something like that bite I had then that we missed. How dare I miss it? But there, these little dinky ones, these are gudgeons and perch and that we don't want them obviously, but it's important that we have them in our peg. 
So it's just gone that little bit quieter again now. So it might be a carp on the prowl. Now what I have got as well, folks, is three sections of pole set up on my right hand side, just in case. Now obviously with fishing heavy, I want to try and stop these fish on the first run, which is what you'll see when we eventually do a carp, I'll wallop into it, keep that pole nice and low, and then try and stop its first run. Then generally you can do a few strips and it'll be ready for to be netted. If it is carrying on going out, I will put sections on. And Richard will not shout at me for putting sections on. So there's definitely a carp or something there now, folks, because it's gone that little bit quieter. There we go. See what I mean? Well, it might not be a carp, actually. That might be... What's that? That's not a carp. It might be a big perch or something. Well, it might be an F1 or something. What is that? That's not a carp. What have we got here, folks? <gasps> it is a big perch. Blooming heck. I've never caught a big perch in here. Ooh. Oh, this is a bonus, folks. I wasn't expecting that. It just shows you'll catch blooming everything on it. Look at that, folks. I've never caught a big perch from the arena. Look at that for a bonus. Yes, please. Let me show my daughter in the van. Leah! My daughter's off with COVID today, folks. Oh, she likes that. Look at that. That is like, that's, that's done my head in that. Loving that. It's probably, I'm going to say, one pound and 14 ounces. Go on, the big perches. Well, that's a bonus. I'm going to say we're after cart, but... You do not mind catching perches like that. And he's burgled three of my maggots, so I'll put another couple of maggots on. Oh, I'm lost for words with that, folks. Wasn't expecting a big perch. Wasn't expecting that at all. But we knew something big was there because we weren't getting them little babby bites. So, get into place again, over a marker, two lots of feed. Yeah, not overly worried about being accurate or anything like that. I want to make sure this bit's right, that I'm lined up. But feeding-wise, so obviously when these big fish start coming in, these big carp, it's just all about getting them over a, over a bit of an area. Because you want them in in sort of like big numbers. That float as well, you can afford to have quite a little bit more bristle out. So what I might do in a sec is just take that number 11 off just so I've got a little bit more bristle showing. I've got a swirl down here. It tells you that they're coming in. Now as for keep nets, you're thinking, well, why would you fish there, Andrew? Because your keep nets would be in. This is when, obviously, we talked about before, making sure you're putting your keep nets out at angles and potentially pinning them back. It can be a... You know, obviously, you've got the depth as well, the keep nets will be dropping. And I think, obviously, the, the colour that the fish in your keep nets will be, uh, will be producing will attract the fish in as well. It's all about that commotion, that colour going in the water. It's such a good way of fishing, it really is. That's a little dinky fish then. Get that out of the way. You can tell the little dinky fish by the bites, yeah? Nice and slow. Not interested in that. We just want it to go a million mile an hour, like that last one. I reckon that was a, the one that we missed as well. I reckon that was a big perch. Go on a perch. Proper. So there's some up there again now. Little and babby, we don't want that. Obviously, there could, there could be liners. There's a little babby one on. There could be liners as well, some of them um, slow bites as well, folks, yeah? Get in position again. So you see how I'm, like, feeding really... Really aggressively, yeah? Certainly not letting three minutes go by without putting some bait in. Trust me, you cannot over... That could have been a bigger fish, that. You cannot overfeed these fish in the slightest when they start coming in. It's just like soup for them, maggots, basically. Yeah, I'm going to take that number 11 off. Yeah. I'm going to take that number 11 off, folks, because that float is sitting a bit too low. I'm striking it. Some false bites. That should make all the difference now. So I've got my bunch of Maggie Wise on. Get on my markers. Oops, that was a bit far. Feed and feed. That's better. There we go then, folks. So you saw that. As soon as you've got one, what I would recommend, get some bait in, but we knew there was something big there then. So yeah, so as soon as you had a big charge out, a couple of strips back, and then get that fish, because we're fishing heavy, yeah? Try and get that fish under control. Oh, that's a, that's a unit. I think it's just like, obviously fishing heavy and that, that elastic, it just tends to shock the fish kind of thing. Especially that big strike as well. I just can't tell you how good it is, folks, when you get them going and competing. Even like this thing here, obviously it's churning all the bottom up where you're fishing. Don't, don't worry about it, you know. It's still going to bring them fish back in. You definitely 100% need to feed as soon as you hook one. Yeah, your two lots. And then again, as soon as you're back in business, but this is why you need to fish heavy. 
Yeah, these fish like the angriest fish in the world. Oh, there we go. Lovely mirror. I mean, that's a, that's a small one for that line, but he's still, I'd say he's still sort of getting on for six pounds, but that's what you can expect, folks. I'll just unhook him. And then we'll show you a lovely lot. One of them, oh, perfect in the top lip. Dear lad would be happy. Just give me a quick rinse for you. But this is what you can expect. And now, bearing in mind, this is a small one for this line, but it's still getting on towards six pounds. Yeah. Come on, be nice. Lovely, lovely carps like that. Immaculate condition. He's not very happy, is he? Let's have a little, little show for you. Yeah, yeah, fish like that, folks. And then, obviously, that's a smaller one. We get much bigger than that. But get out, folks. Give it a try, and you will have the best session you've ever had, certainly for this time of year. When it comes that little bit cold, I'd say, first frost, you'll be all right. But when it gets after that one, into your second, or th certainly third frost, forget about it. That's when you need to go out further into uh, open water. But give it a try, folks, and you will absolutely love it. Right then, you lovely lot, our brand new Winning Ways merch has just arrived. We have got the blue hoodie, the black hoodie, the grey polo, and also available is the limited edition Pets on the Cave t-shirt. So head over to www.winningways.shop and get yourself them bought. Yeah! Eesh.